Well, there it is. There is the bike. This has been months and months in planning. And today is finally the day that I'm heading off on my first ever bike packing trip. I am absolutely buzzing. It feels a little bit weird because all that's left to do now is get the bike out of the back of the van and then start pedaling. So there we go, that is my setup. Big bag on the back with clothes and my stove and a few other essentials. Frame bag in the middle, which is for my food mostly. <laughs> and then the front handlebar bag here has got my camping setup, my tent, my mat, things like that. So we've got this little stem bag here as well. And then we've got the hip pack. And this contains all of my camera gear. My name's Henry, I'm a full-time landscape photographer and look, there is not a chance I'm coming on a trip like this without any camera gear, even if I have brought the smallest amount possible. And we're headed off into those mountains that you can see there to start off with. <sighs> Absolutely buzzing. <laughs> Oh, no way, man. This is already my fourth gate. <laughs> I've only been cycling for, honestly, oh, three or four minutes. I suppose I'll have to get used to this pretty quickly. Oh. There we go. Right, so this could not have started off any worse. I've been going down this single track here for about 10 minutes, pushing the bike because it is just so narrow. I wouldn't even be mad to walk down this. Never mind cycle. At this stage, it is completely unrideable. <laughs> what a start, man. However, judging by my little cycling computer here that you may or may not be able to see, I turn right there in what is that saying? 80 meters. So hopefully we'll be off this and we can make a little bit of progress, bearing in mind we've just started. <sighs> Man, it has been tough so far, but I'm finally at my first little section of a descent, which is probably gonna take me all of about 20 seconds. You can see we're out in the open a little bit now as well, some really nice views of the Coniston Fells. I'm gonna start thinking about the photography soon enough as well. Um, so I just wanted to, I'll pop it up on the screen here. I just wanted to show you my route. I'm hoping it's gonna take me three days, but I mean, at this rate, it could be taking me a week. <laughs> but we'll see. It's a 100 kilometre route. Um, it's a loop that starts and finishes at the van. And I'll just show you it briefly. We go over into Eskadale, um, over down into Wasdale, past Wastwater, right over to Buttermere, up Honister Pass, through Borrowdale, and then back along through Little Langdale, Langdale Valley a little bit, back into Coniston and then back to the van, like I said. So yeah, maybe overestimating it a little bit, but this is absolute quality. I've already got the photograph of the horse. Hopefully I can get some more, but for now I am gonna enjoy my little micro descent. I've had my first fall already. I've had a little tumble, everything's all right, but we've got a muddy body and yeah, hands are a bit, a bit muddy. Fortunately, it was one of those like stationary falls where I stopped to get off the bike to push it and fell over. Slit, there it is, look. Ah, So it's steep. I'm gonna have a good section here of just pushing the bike up like, uh, which is fine. I knew there were gonna be sections like this, but yeah, I think it's time to try and crack on and make a little bit of headway up towards the wonderful Coniston Fells and hopefully try and not have any more falls. <laughs> oh, 
Well, I tell you what, it is amazing how the elements can sap the enthusiasm out here, man. This is tough. My enthusiasm hasn't gone just yet, but yeah, this is getting, this is a tricky ascent, man. So I've stopped here because this is right down my street here for my photography. And I've brought only my little 16 to 50 millimeter lens, the little kit lens that comes with this. This is what I usually use for my videos. And this is tiny. Look at it, look at the size of it. <laughs> look at the size of it, it's so small. And it just felt like the right thing to do, you know? So aperture priority. And all I'm wanting is these two rocks here in the frame down in the foreground and it's so lovely and moody up there and i might even grab one photograph with the bike down in the foreground as well just as just as a little bit of a reminder for this moment where i've been struggling i can look back on it and hopefully i can remember how i pushed through literally <laughs> up this frigging hill My goodness, we have made it up to this beautiful little summit here, just next to Walnaskar. That was tough, but dare I say it, probably worth it. Worth every push and pull of my big heavy bike, ah, and worth every step. I'm gonna have a little bit of a rest here, and uh, this is nice actually because that sort of conical shaped peak you can probably see in the background is Harter Fell. I'm heading in his direction, and I'm either gonna stay on or next to Harterfell this evening in my tent while camping or I'll see how I am for time. I might bypass Harterfell and head up towards Eskdale a bit further and yeah find somewhere up there but yeah it's nice this is a this is a good milestone to be at for me where I've made it up uh, which is actually the ascent that I've just come up from there is the worst on my whole 100 kilometers so that's brilliant that's out the way that's done and it wasn't too bad it just took quite a while, but now we've got another descent. I think it's going to be a big one, so I need to be careful, but ah, looking forward to it. We've had a nightmare. We have had a nightmare, man. Ah, things are all right. I'm all right. Bike's all right. It looks, I'm, I'm looking, it looks like I've launched myself off the bike here. Um, mechanical problems. Two. Two in one go, a double whammy. I'll tell you right now. It's game over. This is it. Oh, the light's nice over there. I'll grab a photograph. <laughs> oh, he's not lost. Give us a sec. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. That is class. F11, 140th, ISO 100. Oh, that's not bad, that isn't. I'll probably crop that as a 16 by 9. You're probably seeing that now. Um, there was just a bit too much on the bottom that was unnecessary. But back to our... <sighs> Issue, I'm gonna to have to, it's gonna to have to be game over. I'm gonna to have to go back to the van. Um, let me show you this. So, once again, I'll reiterate, I haven't like fallen. I've just placed um, the bike down here to see what the problem is. But look, my, my rear rack thing, it's come off. Obviously this little bolt here, you can see where it goes there. It's, it's just, it's, it's had enough. It didn't want, to, didn't want to come on this adventure with us anymore. Um, so yeah, that's the downer. Fortunately, my bag that's on the back is also a backpack so i haven't got any spare bolts or anything like that which is my first lesson i brought as many tools and spare things as i could think of spare bolts is probably quite an obvious one isn't it now this adventure for the most part was supposed to be a bit of a test for bike packing going forward I've absolutely loved it. It's been quality. But if things like this happen, I'm not too bothered. Of course I am to an extent. I wanted to enjoy this little trip. But, you know, it's things like this that is going to help me learn. But yeah, fortunately this bag here is also a backpack so I can ride with this on. So I don't have to have any weight on the rear rack. But that wasn't even the first issue. I'll show you what happened. Oh man, it seems the bike's just falling apart. <laughs> oh goodness. Right, get them bungee cords down there. Hopefully this will just stay on. Right, I'm gonna go back up the hill and listen to this. Oh, 
Oh, isn't that just a beautiful noise? I don't know enough about bike mechanics, man, but I think, I think the brake pads, pads are worn. Oh, mate, that is such a downer, but I've looked on the map. Fortunately, um, I've just got to get down this hill and then eventually we get back on just normal roads and I can swing back round to where my van was as the crow flies. I'm not that far from my van at all, so things could be a lot worse. Bit of a downer, but I'm all right. Bike's all right for the most part and things could be a lot worse, but we'll carry on. If I see anything to photograph on the way back to the van, I shall be getting the old camera back out because we're in a beautiful area, the light's lovely. And uh, yeah, I still like to try and make the most of today. But for now, we have got to crawl back to the van. I tell you what, I, some video this is going to be. <laughs> what a wally. Right, let's move on. So you can see, I've just stopped to show you. I've just fashioned up a little bit of a bodge job <laughs> with the bungee cord, just to try and keep that rack in somewhat place. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's a bit of a shame because since I came down from that ascent it's been lovely like it's been the first part of the whole ride that um, I don't know it's just felt really nice like quite flat some small descents and like just this now riding on this it's, I mean look at the views it's absolutely class and um, so I can only feel positive I can only feel happy and yeah these couple of things just is what it is isn't it? it is what it is and like I said I've come out on a test and I think I think I've learned a lot from it like not just these couple of mechanical things I've only been out for like four hours man but yeah I just feel like I've learned so much from it and um, I don't want to mess it's the brakes more than anything like I could maybe get away with the rack bodge it even more with the bungee cords but yeah the brakes I don't want to mess around with them at all Got the tools out. You've got to laugh. You've got to laugh. You're going to laugh at this. I'm laughing because if I'm if, I, if I'm not laughing, I'll be crying. Like, look at this. The other side has come off. Goodness me. So now it's just flapping about all over the gaff like a seagull. Um, so I've just got to take this bolt off here. Take it off completely and then I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, ladies and gents. Um, I mean, I will probably strap it to the back of my bag perhaps, you know, with one of the bungee cords. So it's a bodge of a bodge, it seems. But I've just, it's been a really, really nice ascent, like quite gradual, which is lucky because of the brakes. The brakes don't seem to be too bad as long as the descent is just, you know, gra gradual, not too steep. And I've just been smiling the whole way down. That was quality. I can't believe I've never, I've never done like mountain biking before properly. I know this isn't like proper mountain biking, but this is an absolute barrel of laughs. This is so much fun. So a bit further down into that valley once I've done my bodge of a bodge. Um, and then, yeah, we should be back on normal roads, which this has been fun. But yeah, I'm looking forward to a bit of flat terrain. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Oh. Oh wow, the light is beautiful. You can maybe see it shimmering through those trees every now and again there. Oh, absolutely wonderful, man. Look at this. Look at this. This is one of the, this is one of the best, best failures that I've ever had, if you want to even call it that. Oh, what a day, what an adventure. I, you know what? I think the reason I don't mind this failure so much if you want to call it that, is I've just been thinking a lot recently about life, like my own life, and the past couple of years have been wonderful, really nice, really safe and comfortable and happy, and I'm so grateful, you know, of course, I wouldn't want it any other way, like, I'm very fortunate, but one of the words that I just used, comfortable, I think... I struggle with that a bit sometimes, and I, th I think I mean more specifically like comfort zones. <laughs> That's what I'm chatting about. 
sometimes I feel that I, or I worry that I'm gonna get stuck in a comfort zone and not wanna do anything outside of that zone, outside of that box because it scares me. And then the older I'm gonna get, the less I'm gonna to wanna to do it, I don't know. And I think that's how, that's why I picked up this bike packing thing because I suppose it's not a massive deal, but yeah, it's just, it's just something a little bit different, something that pushes me outside of that all too familiar comfort zone, just a little bit, you know, just a little bit. And I think just, just this little trip today, like I said, it's not a massive deal. It's just a little bike packing trip, but I think it sort of represents this kind of longing to always push the boundaries of that comfort zone, if you will. Um, I don't know. Please comment below. Hopefully some of you feel the same way. But I, I really believe in like doing things that make you uncomfortable, help you to grow, they make you a better person. Ultimately, it brings you more fulfillment out of life. And it's just, yeah, past couple of years, I think, I've just been thinking about it a lot. Um, and I felt pretty comfortable. All right, I'm definitely not in a comfort zone at the minute, going up this frigging hill. This is a beast. Chat to you in a bit. Oh. Oh. Hello, me van. Oh. I bet you weren't expecting to see me back so soon. Oh, good state of me, man. Good state of me. Rack on me bag. Frigging tripod sticking out. Biking bit. I love it. Living the dream, mate. Oh, gosh. Oh, we're back, we're back in the van, you little beauty. Oh, I am shattered. I just looked at my little cycling computer on the front there. I've only done frigging 20 kilometers. <laughs> just so much elevation, so much pushing the bike. And uh, oh, I'll tell you what, that last bit of the, the ride, the descent there, back to basically where the van is was quality. That was a lot of fun. It was like I reaped the rewards of all of that ascending that I did earlier on. It had to happen at some point, but yeah, that was cool. Now, I was just thinking about the whole idea that this is a failed adventure thing. And why I feel so happy about it is because I feel quite good about myself in the fact that I tried. I've given it a go. I'll definitely do this again. I've loved every second of it, even with all the um, failures and hurdles. And yeah, I was thinking about just that. If you've ever failed at something, I've got respect for you instantly. I will applaud you because it means that you've given something a go, you've tried at something, you've you've tried to come out of your comfort zone. That's what it means most of the time. And look, that is a good thing. And I'm sure we can all agree failure is rubbish. It's not ideal, doesn't feel great. <laughs> but yeah, if you can try and think about that positive side of it, like I've managed to do today somehow, that's good, that's fantastic. Because like, you know, you'll feel a lot better about yourself and. I suppose what I'm trying to say is, I'd like this video to be about the positive side of failure, let's call it. Get out there and fail, guys. Get out there and make mistakes, do it. Because it means that you're giving something a go and pushing the boundaries of that comfort zone, like I said, and that's quality, man. All right, I'm going home. I'm going home for a Thai. Thai meal, Thai takeaway. That is what is on the menu. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, Please do hit the subscribe button, that will be quality. Join me on some of my future adventures, which will hopefully have some more success. And um, yeah, please comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Hit the thumbs up button if you have a quick second. And I shall see you on the next adventure. Out!